Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Sorry about the technical difficulties just a moment ago. I'm sure it was uh, on my end. But uh, again, I'm Bridget Fazelaire with Leverage Benefits Group. And joining me is Joe Simkoviak, who I'm sure um, some of you have spoken with in the past. And uh, as Leah mentioned, ironically, we had this meeting scheduled quite some time ago. And um, I think it goes without saying we'd much rather be there in person, but it's, it's great that we're still able to do this because of the timing of the situation and some updates that we're able to provide. So um, we, will, we will be giving some high level updates regarding um, COVID-19 to the best of our ability as it changes quite frequently. Um, <clears throat> and I know we're all working to do our part to control this and get through it as quickly as possible. Um, so with that being said, we know this is kind of a top of mind. So we're actually gonna touch on that first and then um, move through the agenda. So we'll, we'll speak a little bit about that um, and also talk through your medical plan. Um, for some of you, this is new this year. And so we're just gonna talk through some of the logistics and reminders on the medical, um, some tools you can use for your pharmacy, as well as MD Live, which is um, the telemedicine um, benefit that you have with the plan. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Joe, who will uh, talk about some information, preventive care, um, some tips and tricks, your ancillary coverage, dental vision, cost saving tips, um, financial wellness, and some real life situations as to what to do in specific scenarios, um, just to make things easier for you. Okay, so starting off with COVID-19, um, first and foremost, as I mentioned, the information changes by the hour um, and all of us are getting inundated with various resources. Um, so always call, consult your physician if you have questions. This information that I'm gonna talk through may change tomorrow. So I know this call is being recorded. So if you're viewing this or, or reviewing this and listening to this a few days down the road, I mean, there could be a possibility that they've found something new in all of this. Um, so just please keep that in mind. Um, the reason why this is so detrimental is because it's hitting all at once, which is overwhelming the healthcare system. So knowing that, um, you know, for some, this doesn't have a huge effect as far as symptoms. The reason why this is so critical right now is because it is a new virus that's hitting at once. So everything is really being done to try and slow it for one of the reasons, a huge reason is to really make it more manageable for the hospitals and healthcare workers to be able to provide um, the treatments. Obviously this isn't the case in all states, so some are being hit much uh, worse than others right now. And so it's really just trying to manage that influx. Um, so, you know, there's some pieces too that is um, misconceptions and obviously everyone knows that there is so much going around right now, but um, there are some misnomers, I guess, as far as who can and can't get it. Um, we do know in the states they are seeing, um, not that it's a lot, but they are seeing more younger cases. And, you know, there's speculation as to why that is, but, you know, every country is different in their lifestyles um, and things that are going on, which are affecting the lungs and, and why it may be attacking or having a much more um, severe impact on some of the younger um, demographic. And, and that could be due to um, some say vaping or, um, different reasons again it's speculation but i think the key is everyone can carry it even if there are no symptoms um, and they still are seeing that the most common are um, over 65 with under underlying health conditions and some of those can be diabetes cancer um, lung issues um, and, and other areas so i think the biggest message is if we can stay within the parameters of what they're asking us to do, hopefully this will help manage, um, manage this. And as of yesterday, there still is no FDA approved antiviral treatment. However, they are starting many clinical trials, which is encouraging. So we'll see what happens um, there. So just real quick, again, it can be spread through close contact, three to six feet, um, droplets from the nose and mouth. If you're touching your face, your eyes, your nose, um, it can last hours. 
on some surfaces and up to days on others. So we'll talk through um, the reason why, uh, you know, the wiping down of surfaces is so important. We'll talk through that in another slide. It can be spread um, through stool and feces. And um, another reason why they're really pushing the social distancing is because with this particular virus, every person can infect two to three others versus a seasonal flu is about one to 1 1.5. So that's the other reason why this is spreading um, much more quickly. Now the silver lining, which I think is a silver lining, is that while it's highly contagious, it is extremely vulnerable to, uh, to destruction. So that is why they're saying just washing your hands with soap for 20 seconds um, can destroy this virus. There's a fatty exterior on the outside that can slide off and be destroyed very easily. So, I mean, I can't even imagine if this was something that was indestructible. But um, so that's why just regular soap and water can kill this virus. So you've all seen it, I'm sure, but this is really the reason why. Um, using hand sanitizer with over 60% alcohol and wiping down areas with household cleaners regularly um, or areas where it's, it's used frequently. So it's not necessarily that you need these antibacterial soaps. I mean, just the, the sudsy soap that you use uh, regular soap can can destroy this, and I, I that is something that is um, a positive in all of this. Okay, so be careful not to generalize because depending on the country, the area, the demographic, um, symptoms can vary. And so the most common that they're seeing here with this virus is cough, fever, and shortness of breath. Less common but still could be a symptom, are runny nose, sneezing, sore throat. Um, that is more common, they're finding, in children and even digestive issues, um, diarrhea. They're finding that with children that have it, those are, those are more of what the symptoms are. Potentially, again, this, the more studies and the more people that have it, the more data they have, but this is what they're seeing right now. Um, and then I'm sure some of you have seen the recent reports that um, many are reporting loss of taste and smell as a symptom. And sometimes that's their only um, issue with no other signs, no fever, no cough, just that um, indication. And um, they're seeing that more and more. So it's just something to watch for. Okay, so to help everything out, what they're finding is there are far too many visits from the worried well. Um, people are, it gets in your head. And I know we, we've all kind of felt, you, there's probably nothing going on, but you think it's a tickle in your throat or your, your sinuses are acting up. So um, they're trying to keep people out of the doctor's offices and facilities as much as possible. Um, so, Try to um, contact your physician, and we're going to talk about MD Live too, because there's two different ways to go about it. Some physicians are now doing telephonic um, visits. Now they're going to treat that just like an office visit, so you will be charged your office visit copay, or if you're on, you're on your um, high deductible plan, potentially it could be uh, it could be um, the deductible first. MD Live. Um, there is no charge, and that has changed with COVID ID if, or COVID-19. If there are um, <clears throat> symptoms and calls with concern regarding that, um, there will be no charge for that, even on the high deductible plan. So that $40, $45 copay will be waived. Um, one thing to note, because of what's going on right now, MD Live is experiencing much higher uh, call wait times. <clears throat> so, I think we can all recognize it's somewhat understandable. They're getting inundated. Um, you may have up to an hour, possibly over an hour wait. Um, just expect that. And they are recognizing that. And as we speak, um, these tele telemedicine um, vendors are actually adding more doctors to be able to handle um, 
the volume of calls coming in. So they're anticipating even by the end of this week, those call wait times may go down. Um, so if you're just patient enough to know that it, it, this is an anomaly, it's not the norm. I mean, I've used it many times in my family and it's less than 10 minutes that I get a call back, but due to the circumstances, it's just different right now. Um, and they'll be able to, actually, we'll talk in a few slides more about MD Live. Um, so I'll touch on that after. Um, and then prior authorization. So some states, in some areas where they are really experiencing a high volume of people coming into the hospitals are asking for any of the non-emergency or voluntary um, surgeries to get postponed. Um, so prior authorizations are, be ex are being extended. So where there might be an expiration on your authorization, um, they're extending that out um, and, and it may vary uh, but it, it could be 90 days or, or more. You know, things continue to change in the carriers and the plans. We're adjusting plans to try to make it as flexible as possible to ensure that people are not um, holding off on getting treatment for this and also trying to make it easy to um, push out some of these surgeries um, that are not necessary to leave capacity. Okay, testing and coverage. So uh, within the last uh, very short period of time, um, the, the plan has been rewritten so that the, if you need to get tested, there is absolutely no cost to you, regardless of the plan you're on. So all testing will be covered. Um, if there is treatment or drug coverage associated with potentially a COVID-19 diagnosis, um, that would just fall under your, your current plan design. So again, the testing is at no cost. Um, and if there is treatment, it just falls under your standard plan design. Um, adhere to social distancing, use MD Live when possible. Again, it's gonna be a $0 consult regardless of plan if it's associated with a COVID-19 um, call. And um, they can also help if they do feel, so obviously you can't be tested um, using MD Live or uh, a consult over the phone, but based on your symptoms and based on some questions and criteria they're going to ask, they are going to ask if you've been visiting other areas that are, um, you know, one of the hot spots right now, your age, if you have underlying health issues, um, symptoms, they then may direct you to a testing site and they can tell you where that would be. They may tell you to self-quarantine without a test just because of the availability of testing, um, but they will be able to assist in that process. Um, I'm not gonna go through this in great detail. We did touch on most of this, but just to make sure, obviously, if you're feeling sick, stay at home. Um, if you're around anyone that has tested positive, you need to all stay at home. Um, you know, I know they've, they've shut down a lot of areas already. Um, so I think it's just make sure you're listening to what your local um, government is asking you to do and, and take it seriously and do that. And again, use MD Live when possible if you have any, um, even if it's something outside, maybe it's a rash. I mean, just don't go into the doctor, use MD Live to avoid, to avoid that. So, um, and lastly, if you have some concerns if you have anxiety, if you have a family member who's going through this, um, you have an EAP at your disposal and the information is here, please use them. They're 24 seven and they're available to deal with anything associated with this virus. Also, you know, anything else that's going on in your life um, outside of that, if you need assistance, um, they're here to help. And that is part of your um, benefit plan. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to just some reminders as it pertains to your medical plan. Um, I know many of you have been on the plan for a while and are very familiar with this, while some of, some of you it may be new this year. So just to remind you, um, this is a self-funded plan, plan, which means we have much more control and flexibility in being able to tailor um, the plans for you and also keep costs down um, so that your contributions can stay within a manageable um, 
uh, without high increases um, when we're able to do that. So this also allows us to offer multiple plans and, and we were able to match certain plans. So um, the flexibility is there. Um, so to do this, because all large companies do this, because this is, this is the way that you have the flexibility and, and control. We have to then partner with different vendors to be able to manage the plan design. So there's really three players. Um, one, which is Bywater, who actually manages the program. They manage all of the logis logistics, um, the enrollment, the plan design, the claims adjudication. They are really, um, they're handling all of the administration. Now, Cigna is the network that we lease, okay? So you don't have Cigna insurance but we use the Cigna network of doctors and hospitals so that you get the advantage of those in-network discounts. And I'll show you that um, when we look at an explanation of benefits example. So Bywater is where the doctor and the farm, I'm sorry, the doctor um, and hospitals would send the claims to, they would send their bill to Bywater. Um, but, and when you're checking your plan design, or if a doctor's checking your benefits, what benefits do you have? Are you on the plan? They're gonna talk to Bywater. When you're calling your doctor, you don't say, do you take Bywater insurance? You just ask, are you in the Cigna network? Do you participate in the Cigna network? Because that tells you that you're gonna get that in-network discount. And the network name is PPO Choice Fund. So I'll show you in a few slides how you can look up to see if your doctors and facilities are in the network. Um, but you do not want to contact Cigna and your doctor does not want to contact Cigna to say, hey, do you show Joe Smith on your plan, on, on this plan? Do you show Joe Smith as being covered on the plan? Um, you would they would contact Bywater. And all of that information is on the card. So they have that right on the card, who to call to check eligibility. And then Castia is our drug coverage. So this is how we're able to really get, um, well, what's nice is uh, better pricing on the drugs, but also broader access. So you may have been on plans in the past where they say you can only go to Walgreens or you can never go to CVS, it's not part of the drug network. Um, this allows us to be much more flexible, have a much more um, a broad scope as far as the pharmacies you can go to. And if something changes, we have the ability to change uh, pharmacy benefit managers, which is nice. We're not locked in in any of these cases to any specific entity. So if we find that we want to move from the Cigna network, we have that flexibi flexibility to do so and, and still keep your plan design. So um, we'll go through any questions as it pertains to this as well. Very important, if you haven't done so already, register on your Bywater portal. You get so much information on this. Um, you can review claims. Um, you can review your explanation of benefits to see how something was paid if there's a claim that was denied for some reason, maybe a prior auth wasn't given, whatever the case may be, and possibly Joe has helped you to um, be the liaison with Bywater to get that corrected, um, you can then check to see if that claim was reprocessed. <clears throat> so this is a nice portal to get a lot of information. You can view your current coverages. So you can see what your plan design is in detail by going to this site and pulling it up. And you can also request a card if maybe you lost yours, um, you can simply request a new card here. You can also um, link out to Cigna to check for uh, in-network providers and hospitals. And I'll show you um, that screen as well. We can search by claim number, again, provider, um, date of service to look up some of your claims and um, compare it to the bill. And remember, never, ever, ever pay a bill 
if you haven't seen that it's gone through insurance first. You want to make sure that EOB has been processed and the provider has sent the bill through um, to buy water first to get adjudicated. Let's just talk through the EOB sometimes can be uh, confusing. So this is what it looks like, and I'm just going to break down a few areas for you to um, just get to know this a little bit better and navigate through it, to know what you owe and what insurance, what the plan has paid. So in this particular example, um, this is a benefit that is 100% preventive. It's a wellness benefit. So it was a metabolic panel, and the lab billed $46. <clears throat> Now, we talked about that in-network discount. So you've gone in to make sure that this lab is part of the Cigna network, and it is, and it was. So they discounted the cost by $33.92, which means the allowed amount to get billed is now down to $12.08. Now, if it's not in-network, not part of the Cigna network, this discount wouldn't exist. Okay, so that's why it's important to always look for in-network facilities. Um, the allowed amount is 12.08 because it's preventive. It's paid at 100% by the plan. So the payment amount here is what was paid to the lab. You owe nothing. Okay. Similar situation with these services here associated with preventive. We have multiple charges. They're then discounted. It shows what is allowed to get charged after the discount, but because they're preventive, the plan has paid 100%, you pay nothing. Now let's look at a different scenario where there's maybe co-pays and deductibles associated. So in this case, um, again, this doesn't particularly, these are just examples, so it doesn't associate with your direct plan, but in this scenario, um, the MRI was charged at um, $2,517. In network discount, reduced that, and um, they took off $1,621.87, leaving the allowed amount at $895.13. In this scenario, the person had not yet met their deductible, and it was a deductible first um, uh, benefit where they had to meet deductible first, then coinsurance. And in this particular case, it's a, it was a 90% uh, coinsurance that the plan paid. But they hadn't met their deductible, so here you see what deductible um, you are responsible for. So in this case, it was deductible first. You need to meet your deductible. Maybe they hadn't um, paid anything towards deductible yet. The plan pays nothing. You would be responsible for that $895.13. That gets credited towards your deductible accumulation and also towards your out-of-pocket map. Now let's look if there's a copay involved. So here's an office visit. The office um, billed $356. With the network discount, it reduced it by 162.20, leaving an allowed amount of 193.80. This is an office visit, maybe a special, maybe a, a specialist office visit. So the copay for that in the plan design was $60. So what that means is the um, participant is the employee is responsible for the $60 copay or the dependent. And the plan will pay the balance. So in these scenarios here, um, for these other uh, services, because of the plan design, however that may be, there wasn't a copay associated. It was paid at 100%. The plan paid 277.07, and all the patient was responsible for was that $60 copay. So this is really just to show you how to navigate and read the um, explanation of benefits to know who's paying what, at what aspect of your plan is being kicked in at the time and being paid. You'll be always going to show your single and family um, deductible accumulations as well as out-of-pocket maximums. 
Other things in the Bywater portal are you can access your summaries um, plan docs. So if it's after hours, potentially your um, so you know in an after hours urgent care facility and your doctor uh, cannot contact someone at Bywater, you're you're able to pull this information up either um, online or on a mobile app, which I'm going to show you in the next slide, and actually show them what the plan. Um, benefit is the, associated with the plan that you're enrolled in so they can see how it is uh, covered. And then there's forms, claim forms, a lot of other resources that um, you can access. You can download an app. I won't go into this in detail, but make sure you register on Bywater, the portal first, and then go to the app, Benefit Zone, and download. Um, that way you can access everything right from your phone. Again, to find uh, a doctor provider in the Cigna network, when you log on to Cigna.com, make sure you choose PPO Choice Fund PPO Network. So this is the specific network that um, your plan is associated with. And then um, Rx, I'm just going to touch on this quickly. Um, and to do so, I need to do a quick, I'm gonna stop my screen here. And See if I still have the site up. <laughs> okay. Let's see if everybody can see. Can everybody see this now? Well, I can't ask, but hopefully you can see this. <laughs> um, okay, so we had. I can. Like, Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is your Cassia website. Um, if you haven't logged on, do so. So through the Bywater site, all of the drug claims come through that Bywater site. So you're going to see everything consolidated in the Bywater site for both of your medical and drug claims. However, um, through the Cassia site, you can manage medication. So you can order meds. Oh, we timed out. You can. Um, order refills, you can get alerts to show when um, it's time to refill, you can set up auto refills. Um, it's a great, great resource and I hope everybody uses it, uses it especially if you have um, regular medications that you're taking. Request home delivery, you can look up medications, find out where the cheapest um, uh, pharmacy, where to get it for the cheapest cost at pharmacies in your area. Uh, you can look at your prescription history, um, pharmacy ID cards. So there's a lot of um, information here that I just wanted to make sure to show you um, because it is uh, valuable. I'm going to go back over to the presentation. And thank please. This is what happens when I move around here. Okay, can everybody see my screen again? Yes, but start the slideshow. There you go. We're good. Okay. All right. So we went through that. And then um, lastly, I'm just going to touch on MD Live real quick. Um, very important, especially now out of any time. It's crazy how this has just uh, changed, changed the scope. Um, because of COVID-19, um, they have waived all consult fees associated with a COVID-19 call. Obviously, again, if it's a rash, it follows the same um, parameters as it did before. If you're on the H DHP plan, it is a $45 copay and $0 on the other two. Um, so make sure you're using this. Very, very, very important, especially now. Make sure you register on the site to make sure that you are ready to go with your dependents loaded. That way, if you do need to call, you are all set. Um, average wait time is typically 10 minutes expect longer wait times right now, um, but you can use it for so many conditions, um, acne, allergies, diarrhea, ear problems, uh, COVID-19 questions, pink eye, rashes. Um, so make sure you download the app, 
and um, get registered for that. Okay, I'm sure you've heard enough out of me. I'm gonna turn it over to Jo, AKA our rock star, she's amazing, um, to go through the rest yeah. of the information regarding your benefit. And I will First, stop my screen First, let's see if we can share. share. Okay, and, it and over then to I you. go to share. Hang on. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, continuing on with just some information that might keep you healthier, just some reminders, some tips. charged for that. So I want to spend a little time and talk about preventive and diagnostic. Just some little factoids for you here first. I don't know if you knew this, but I love little factoids. 8% of adults, only 8%, 35 and older, ever receive all the recommended preventive care services. It's unbelievable because they're 100% paid for in our medical plans. So why aren't we utilizing that? Chronic diseases, those are things like asthma, COPD, diabetes, heart disease. Some of the conditions that lead up to the chronic disease are definitely avoidable through preventive care services. And these chronic diseases account for about 75% of the nation's healthcare spend. So whenever possible, we wanna get in and get those preventive care services done so we know if there's a diagnosis that will lead us to a chronic disease. The more we can do early on, the better. And here's more fun. Um, did you know that there are 21 covered preventive services for adults, 28 for women specifically, and 31 specifically for children? It's kind of mind boggling when you think of the, the, the tiny amount of things that we do each year to take care of ourselves. Um, so what is a preventive care versus diagnostic care? What kinds of things am I needing to be thinking about when I go into the doctors so that I'm not surprised when I get that EOB and I check and see what I owe? Typically, a preventive care visit or a wellness visit at your physician, you're allowed once a year, it's usually covered at 100% with no cost to you. These are things you do because you're healthy. These are things you do because you wanna stay healthy and you don't have symptoms and you don't have anything ongoing. So I'm not gonna go in for my runny nose or my sinus infection and think I'm gonna pay nothing. That's not preventive care. You're preventing it from getting worse, but that's not what the definition of the preventive care is. You wanna make sure that you're checking your bill, your billing, your EOB, Bridget walked you through how to do that. You want to make sure you're checking those because if there's still money um, that you're owing and you thought it was preventive wellness, I always question it. I always make sure that they put in the right code. Whatever code is submitted on that bill, on that claim form to Bywater, to Cigna, for Cigna to adjudicate, whatever code is put on there, that's what they have to go by. It could be wrong. No one's ever going to question them at Bywater because that's the code the provider put. Legally, they're bound to process the claim that way. So it's up to us to look at our EOB and to question it if we still owe money when we don't think we should have. And a lot of you are great at that. A lot of you send me those kinds of things so that I can do a little digging for you. So continue to do that or start up that relationship with Bywater yourself get that going, whatever's more comfortable, but question. The screening frequency, the network eligibility, they're all based on the plan. So they should be covered at 100% one time a year. Or colonoscopy, some people are on a 10-year plan once they hit a certain age, while some are on a five-year plan. Your records will dictate that and you'll be allowed to have it at the no cost, depending on what the frequency is that you're allowed. Now, diagnostic care is something that we already know is going on. It could be that sinus infection. It could be that I have diabetes and I have to go in and get checked every once in a while. Maybe I'm on Coumadin and I need to get my blood levels checked. 
those are diagnostic. Those will cost you a copay or coinsurance, however the doctor is billing it. But those are questions you can ask ahead of time to make sure that you know what's going to cost you before you have the, the care done. You're still gonna wanna have it done because it's really important to stay on top of those diagnostic issues. But just a little bit of help when you're trying to navigate that system. So preventive health services, there are so many of them. If you go out to healthcare.gov, um, you will see in the middle of this screenshot that it will give you a link for adults, for women and for children to go out there and see what could my child be having, you know, as far as their preventive wellness. Oh, why is my doctor not doing this test for me? You just want to question. You're your own best advocate. So here's a list on healthcare.gov of all the things that are ACA approved for preventive health care. Another way to save money is if you have a chronic condition like diabetes, you want to be aware that, that you're paying attention to it. There are no real clear symptoms for diabetes, but some things give you clues. And we've seen an increase in diabetes in all kinds of our clients over the years. Um, and so that's why I'm hitting on this topic um, because adherence is, is so critical. Sometimes if you become thirsty more often, or maybe you have to use the bathroom more often, or you're hungrier, or you feel tired and you don't know why, some of these things could be anxiety, but so, you know, the tiredness, the fatigue, but they also could be a symptom of diabetes. Um, there are other symptoms that are prescribed as diabetic complications. So once you've passed some of those early on symptoms, like the being thirsty, the having to use the bathroom more often, more hunger, some of the more complicated symptoms are there's a change in your vision. Maybe you keep having these infections, these rashes that don't heal very easily. Maybe you have a tingling or a numbness in your arms or your hands that you didn't have before, maybe in your leg. Um, and maybe your gums start to bleed a little bit. We're gonna talk about uh, how to make sure that you stay in network for your dental program. But there are so many things with regards to your mouth that, that your dental provider can find out about different diseases, and diabetes is one of them. So all of the tools that you're being provided at LSCU work together to help keep you from getting or, or being more aware if one of these chronic conditions is coming on. So with diabetes, there are management programs. There are uh, savings cards out there, medications, Oh my gosh, adherence is key. This week we just learned about someone on one of our multiple groups that had their, their foot amputated because they didn't take charge of their diabetes. They just let it go, they just let it go, they just let it go, and then it was too late. So make sure that you're taking your medications. There's different forms of treatment, insulin versus non-insulin. Talk to your doctor, figure out what's the best way, what, what's the best prescription for you, and maybe it's a cocktail of things that are gonna help control you. Um, one of the things we wanna point out is through Bywater, there is a testing supply program called GEM, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that in a second, um, but that will give you some testing supplies delivered to your home for free at no cost. Um, and, and again, be aware of the savings cards. They're out there. Look up a drug, ask your doctor to help you shop that kind of thing. They can do that. Their staff in the office is awesome. Now, don't do it now because they're probably overwhelmed with COVID-19, but just food for thought for down the road. Um, a huge piece of diabetes is the food that we eat, the things that we put in our body. So these are just some examples. You can find these on any website. Just what are my better starches? What are my better vegetables, fruits, proteins, dairy? What are the things that I can do that will help? You know, um, my husband just got notified that, okay, he better watch what he's eating, watch his diet, because they believe he's becoming pre-diabetic. So, okay, we, 
we are adhering to this list of choices, which may not be that fun, but we are doing it now because we want him to avoid having to be on medication if he can possibly do that. So we're losing weight and we're eating better. Um, but those are little things you can be doing for yourself. So in this world of healthcare, things get expensive. We don't know if we're supposed to pay for things, if we're not supposed to pay for things, how can we save money? So here's just a few little tips on the next few slides to help you navigate better. Bridget mentioned stay in network when possible. If you go out and network, you might have some balanced billing. Always that costs you more. You don't get the network discounts applied, so then you're going to owe that money at the end. Check the carrier provider listing periodically. Just make sure. A lot of doctors float in and out of networks all year long. Sometimes a hospital will choose their own staff and want to use that for surgeries. You need to just make sure that you're checking. And if you need help with that, give me a holler. You know, if I can't navigate it, I'll find someone at Bywater who can do some research for us. No problem. Here are a couple of, of good phone numbers uh, for you. You can see mine is there, but for medical, get used to get calling in Bywater. Um, they might be a little quicker at the answer. I do the best I can, and hopefully it's not a real long wait for you. I'm happy to help in any situation, but Bywater has a full staff that can help as well. Um, just to try to shortcut and circumvent uh, having any wait time for yourself trying to find answers. Dental. You've seen this slide before. I know Leah sent it out, but I just want to remind you, you don't need a card. If you have the MetLife program, you do not need a card. Your group number is important for you to know, and you need to have that. So stick it in your phone somewhere um, so that you know what your group number is, because they will ask you that at the dentist office until they get to know what your coverage is. You're going to know, need to know your last name and first name, your social security number, and the date of birth of those seeking services. Hopefully, those are things you also store somewhere in your purse, in your wallet, on your phone, wherever. To find the provider, again, stay in network, save the money. Same thing happens with your dental as medical. There are in-network discounts applied. All these dentists have signed a contract that say, I'm only going to charge this much for this service. So stay in network. How do I do that? Here's the link on how to do that. Um, but again, this is going to be recorded and this will be posted somewhere, I'm sure, for all of you. You scroll down, find a dentist. The name of your network is PDP+. Plus. Enter your zip code and click on find a dentist. So pretty simple, but we forget. And so this is just a, a nice little reminder. Same with your vision. You do not need a card to go see your, your vision, uh, your eye doctor, to get your eyes tested, to get new glasses. No card is needed. Your provider is IMED. Hopefully you knew, you knew that, you remembered that. <laughs> your group number is listed here. You need to know that and the same thing. First name, last name, social security number, and date of birth of the people that need the service. They can find you. Finding the provider, again, discounts apply. If you don't stay in network, they charge you more. That's just the luck of the game. So let's stay in when we can. So the website's listed here, locate a provider. Again, the name of your network, IMED Insight Network. That's just important to remember, the group number and the name of the network, remember that. Enter your zip code, click on the box, get results, and voila, there you have your list of providers. So we talked about the diabetic wellness program, GemCare. Here's a little bit more information about it. Um, they have testing supplies. They don't have all diabetic supplies, but they do have major brands of testing supplies. Um, for glucose meter, blood glucose meter, test strips, launching, de lancing devices, lancets, and control solutions. Those things can all be shipped to you at your home free. 
90 day shipments of testing supplies. So you get it, you get a bigger batch and you don't have to worry. Um, you can do this by either going online to the website that's listed here, or you can email them, or you can call uh, the 800 number, the 888 number. You always, no matter which way you're trying, you always want to mention buy water. That's how you will be plugged into the discount. That's how you'll be plugged into the no copay or out of pocket costs on these testing supplies. So another way to save money. So we have a great prescription drug program, um, low copays, Castia has a big network, but sometimes the medications we use aren't part of the formulary, part of that list of drugs that they allow. Sometimes they're still expensive. Um, so I always, you know, ask the pharmacist, I always ask my provider, do you have any coupon codes? Are there any manufacturers programs going on right now that can save me some money? You want to do a little shopping of this. Maybe it's cheaper for you if you don't use your medical card and you get your, your prescription drug without you applying it to your medical plan. Maybe you just pay out of pocket. Um, sometimes that's the way you can get your drug the cheapest. Good RX, that's another good place to go shopping the, the, the drug that you take. If you go and look on Good RX, and then maybe you go to your pharmacy and say, Well, here, I found this at Good RX for this price. Is there anything you can do? Just be smart with your money. We all are working hard. And if we don't have to spend the money on things like prescription drugs and we can spend it on something fun, that's better. Um, however, you can save your money, this is just another tip to do that. Another place where we always can stop and think a minute, or maybe we can't stop and think, is making that choice. Where am I going to go for my care? Do I go to my primary care physician? Do I go to the urgent care or do I go to the emergency room? It's confusing to know when to go where. And some of the urgent cares now aren't standalone, just urgent cares. They're part of a, a hospital facility and we don't know that till we get there. So these are things we want to be thinking about with regards to an urgent care before we actually need one. Go into the, into the website and look up urgent care facilities so that you know where they are, the standalone. The emergency room is always going to cost you more. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you're having a heart attack or you've, you've broken a bone. Urgent care can't help you with that. Those aren't things that, that you can do in an urgent care or at your doctor's office. So those are reasons to use the emergency room. But note, it is a larger copay. Urgent care, if I'm thinking about going to urgent care, I'm also thinking about MD Live. I'm thinking about maybe I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna ask them to look at the rash that I've got on my arm and ask, maybe they can prescribe medication and then maybe I didn't have to pay that 50 or $60 copay. Or if I'm on the high deductible plan, I didn't have to pay the discounted network price. So, MD Live, a little bit less expensive at the $0 copay for the gold and silver plans and $45 for the high deductible plan. Lots less than what you're going to pay if you go directly to urgent care. Um, and those are places where MD Live can help you. So you have financial wellness as part of your benefit package as well. And I wanna make sure that we remind people about why this is a value to them. You've got two great programs no matter which plan you're on. You have the health savings account and you have the flexible spending account. And just to review real quickly, you know, you can see on there how much you can contribute per year. We're on a calendar year plan with our medical, with our dental, with our vision. We're also on a calendar year plan January through December for our health savings accounts and our flexible spending accounts. So everything lines up really nicely. On the health savings account, you can see the maximum contribution if you're single or family. Know that these funds are yours. They roll forward every year. 
year after year, they roll over. It's not use it or lose it like the flexible spending account. Now, we, we've already passed our date on that flexible spending account. Remember, you use it or lose it, but you have through March 15th to go ahead and submit for claims. So we've passed that date. Hopefully, all of you got your expenses in. Hopefully, all of you tried to draw down as much money as you could. On a health savings account, the money is only available for you to spend if it's in your account. Unlike the flexible spending account where the money is available day one of the plan because you'll pay that money back and your employer has Sunai loaned you the amount you said you were going to put in. So that if you need to use it in full before you've already deposited it, that's okay with them. On a health savings account, because the money is 100% yours, it's not the same. The money can be used on eligible healthcare expenses on either health savings or flexible spending. And on the health savings account, obviously you have to be in the high deductible health plan in order to use it. People in the gold or silver plans have the availability of that tax savings in the flexible spending account. So these are great programs to keep you more well financially. Everything's about trying to keep as much in your pocket as we can. Here are examples of some of those eligible health expenses. I know you've seen this list before. And note that the full list is, a, is on this link that you could click, IRS Publication 502. So now we want to wrap this up. It's been an hour. You're probably all getting wiggly. I know I am. Um, with some next steps for real life situations. Now that we've kind of done a quick recap on your medical dental vision, let's talk about some real situations and what would happen. My provider needs to confirm my child is on the plan. Who does she call? Well, she doesn't call your doctor because it is your doctor looking for an answer. Best answer, she's gonna call Bywater. All eligibility funnels through Bywater. They're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The provider has a, a site that they can go to as well, and they can see if you're on the plan. They can't see it, what your plan design is, but they can confirm whether your child, whether you, whomever in your family is on the plan. So they always want to start and call Bywater. That's the eligibility check. Next one, my doctor recommended a specialist at this new hospital for a procedure that I need. Is there anything to do before I schedule the appointment for that procedure? Well, a couple of quick things. First, you wanna make sure that both the, the new specialist and the new hospital are part of the network. And if they're not, then you may wanna go back to your doctor and say, hey, I noticed these aren't in network. Any way you can refer me to a specialist that you trust that's in network at a hospital that's in network. It doesn't hurt to push back a little bit on your doctor. He knows um, that that's important to save money. Um, to get you good care is also important, but if he knows and trusts people that are within the network, there's no reason that you don't, that you can't use that. Um, remember your network is the Cigna PPO Choice Fund. You also want to make sure that if this is a procedure with a specialist, chances are that procedure is going to need pre-certification. That your provider should take care of for you, but you want to make sure that, you, that they have. So you want to question that they've pre-certified the, the uh, service, the procedure. If it's non-emergency, non-emergent, then you wanna make sure that your provider's doing that or trying to do that 48 hours ahead of the procedure is scheduled. If it's an emergency and there isn't time for that, just do it within 24 hours afterwards if possible. Another thing that this would make me think of too is maybe you need a second opinion. I mean, we're very trusting of our doctors and we hope that they know the best thing for us. 
but a second opinion is allowed on your plan and it might not be a bad idea. Okay. My provider recommended an expensive specialty drug. What should I be asking before I just say, okay? Well, hopefully in your brain, you've already thought specialty drug. Okay, there's probably no generic available because we always want to do generic when possible. But you always want to ask, okay, it's really expensive. So is it part of my formulary? Make sure that it is. And if it's not, is there something that is part of my formulary? And does he know of any program discounts? If it's a very expensive specialty drug, note also that the folks at Bywater and Castio will be looking. When they see an expensive specialty drug come through, Bridget and I always call and have those conversations and say, is there anything else we can be doing? And certain times there are special programs we can get you en enrolled in where then the cost is almost zero to you, um, but sometimes they're not. And so then we just try to find the best solution we can for you. But we are looking, we are watching, but you wanna make sure that you're also doing that. I have an appointment tomorrow with a new doctor, but I can't find my card. What should I do? Well, duh, hopefully we're all thinking already. Go to the Bywater portal and print one. They're out there. You can also call me, might take me a couple of seconds longer um, if I don't see or, or get your phone call right away. Um, but if they're always out there on the Bywater portal, no worries. Oh, it's 2 a.m. Sunday morning. My child is sick. What are my options? Well, the first thing would pop into my mind after this big, long presentation is MD Live. That's where I'd go. Zero dollar copay on the gold and silver and 45 on the HDHP plan. So. You can always start there. Obviously, you know, the wait time, as Bridget mentioned, is a little bit longer now. Hopefully, it will go back to that 10 to 15 minute time frame soon. Um, but I would always start with MD Live. Urgent care, emergency room, those are always options. But least cost, least exposure is always going to be MD Live. I received a bill from my doctor's office for my last visit. Hmm, should I just pay it? Well, my response would be stop. No, you don't just pay it. You wait for the EOB. You go out to the portal to see if the EOB is posted. One should come by mail, but they always post as well. If there isn't an EOB that you can see, call your provider because you don't want to pay the provider bill. There's no discounted pricing on the provider bill. So you always want to wait for that EOB. If you pay the provider bill and there was discounted pricing, then it's up to you to go back to the provider and get that money back that you overpaid. That's never a good thing and it's a lot of work. So always wait for the provider bill. Okay, that wraps up our presentation, lengthy as it was. Um, I'm gonna turn this over now to Leah. Um, to wrap us up. All right. Well, thank you, um, Bridget and Joe, for that very thorough and informative presentation. Um, I have not received any calls, via, I mean, any questions via the chat, but there is somebody with a raised hand. All right, Denise, I have unmuted you. It was just me. You and I did it privately. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> cool beans. Um, does anybody have, does anybody else have any questions? If you do, use that nice little hand raise feature, and I will um, unmute your line. All right. While I wait for that, I am going to um, just reiterate some points. This presentation was recorded, um, so we will send the recording out um, via email and post it on the intranet once we're done here. Um, in addition, you will receive a survey after this webinar um, just to collect some data. Um, so we have some information moving forward when we schedule the next one of these. Um, as I mentioned before, we're 
planning to have um, a session geared towards information and um, knowledge every quarter. So understanding what your questions are, what information um, you would like to hear would be super helpful in putting those together. Um, and I do not see any additional raised hands. I'm going to thank everybody for participating today. I hope you found this information helpful um, and timely. If you do have any questions, oh, wait, 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 wait. I have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jennifer, I think I, uh, nope. Hmm. Jennifer has a question. There we go. Can you ask? Can, can you hear me? I can hear you. You go ahead. I just wanted to <laughs> remind you to check the chat box too to see if anyone has put anything in the chat. Yeah, I did. I've been, oh wait, okay. there's, there's now one person. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it usually flashes. Um, thank you for that. Um, there is one question that we received via chat and it says, can we receive EOBs electronically instead of by mail? I think EOBs are always posted um, on your portal, or they, they certainly yeah. should be. So that is definitely something you can do. If you're not going to get an email from them. You will have to physically go to the, the portal and pull it out there. Did that help? Sharon, did I answer your question? Um, they'll still be mailed, but you do have access to them electronically. If you log into the Bywater mm -hmm. site, um, if you view your claims, then the um, explanation of benefit links are on the, the left-hand side. Anybody else? <laughs> all right, she said that helps, so cool. All right, well then, if that is all, then again, I will thank everybody again for participating. Again, I hope you found this information to be helpful and timely um, and that you feel better informed to, to use your benefits moving forward. Um, keep a lookout for that survey. Please fill it out. It really does help us um, as we um, design these programs for everyone. So thank you. Happy hump day, and we'll talk soon. Thank you, Bridget and Joe. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.